Media servers are all the rage lately. Streaming services like Netflix and Hulu give you easy access to TVs and movies at home or on the go, but they don't have Blu-ray quality video and audio. High-end servers like the Kaleidoscape provide Blu-ray quality playback, but they're costly to purchase and they limit your playback to the room that that box is located in. Fortunately, there are options like Plex. Plex can provide playback for your DVDs and your Blu-rays in their original quality, no loss in quality. Plex can also stream this content to mobile devices and to your web browser. Beyond movies and television, Plex also provides easy playback of your entire music collection, all of your home movies and your pictures, as well as other internet content. It can become the content hub for your home theater, and it's practically free. Today we're going to walk you through setting up your own Plex system. There are three pieces that you need to get Plex running. Number one, you need the free Plex media server software. This sends your content to the playback devices. Number two, you need the Plex client playback software on a home theater PC or on a supported device like the Roku. These catch the content that the Plex media server sends out. You can also use a mobile device or a web browser, but today we're going to focus on the highest quality playback options. Three, you need to get your content on your computer. So we'll give you some options for moving over content from Blu-rays and DVDs that you own. Part one, the media server. The first step is to download the Plex media server software from Plex.tv. There are options for Windows, Apple's OS X, and a variety of NAS or network attached storage devices, and more. We'll be using the Windows version today. The second step is to install the media server software. During installation, Plex will ask you to name your server. Because mine runs on a computer in my spare bedroom, I'll just call it Bedroom Plex. When the installation is complete, Plex Media Server will now run in the background, even if you restart your computer, unless you tell it not to. If your computer is on and your server is running, you'll have access to your media. Plex will ask you to log in or create a login for Plex. This allows you to view your content and make system changes from any internet connected browser. When you want to make changes to the server settings, you simply log in at plex.tv or right click on the taskbar icon and select Media Manager. All the configuration is done through a simple web interface. The third step is to add your content in libraries. In other words, Plex needs you to point it to the folders that hold all of your movies, TV shows, music, pictures, and other content. You also need to tell Plex what kind of content is in there. Plex calls these libraries. To add a library at any time, log into Plex and click the plus symbol next to your server name to add a library. Movies and TV shows will match show descriptions based on the file name. Music will use metadata tags and photos and home movies will simply display the name of the file itself. If you don't have existing folders, a simple file structure is to create a folder called TV and then point Plex TV Shows library to it. Then move all your TV show files into that folder. A single library can point to multiple folders. So if you have one folder for lossy MP3s and one for FLAC and other lossless audio, you can select both folders for music. For more advanced users, you can create multiple libraries. For instance, you can create a library called Kids TV and only allow your children access to that library through their devices. You can then save your grown-up TV library for your Game of Thrones episodes. That's it. Your content is now being served up. Let's move on to part two to set up a client and get ready to play our content. The first step is to download the Plex client software from Plex.tv. The Plex website shows you all of your options for where you can play back your content. If you have a home theater PC, the free client gives you the most beautiful Plex presentation with the original bitrate and resolution including lossless HD audio. We're going to take another inexpensive and simple approach and load Plex on the $50 Roku streaming stick which doesn't offer original quality, but still looks great, streams Dolby Digital and DTS, is simple to set up, and is available for less than 50 bucks. You can find out more about the Roku streaming stick in our video review. The Plex channel for Roku can be purchased from the Roku store for $5. Plex also offers a monthly, yearly, or lifetime Plex Pass option, which, 
in addition to supporting the Plex developers as they continually add great new features, also gives you access to free applications on all of your platforms, among other things. After you have installed the Plex Roku channel, simply select it and sign in using your Plex login. The Roku will search for your Plex media server and find the media that you're sharing. You can now easily play back TV, movies, music, and pictures stored on your server or your NAS through your Roku. If your media library is a little sparse, let's move on to part three, where we learn how to get the DVDs and Blu-rays that you own onto your Plex server. So as we're talking about ripping Blu-rays and DVDs to your Plex server, a quick note. We know that there is still a lot of legal ambiguity around ripping content that you have legally purchased. At Audioholics, we believe that you should be able to watch your purchased media on your system regardless of whether it's coming from a standalone Blu-ray player or a media center front end. We do not believe that you should be able to rip and keep a copy of borrowed or rented media. If you'd like to discuss this further, please visit the Audioholics forums. All right, with that out of the way, let's get our Blu-rays on Plex. For this, you're going to need a Blu-ray drive installed in your computer and some software. The first step is to download that software. It's called Make MKV, and you can get it at makemkv.com. You'll want to install it, and you can try it for free for 30 days. After that, while the program is still classified as being in beta, the Make MKV folks are going to provide a serial key that enables all the functionality, but it expires each month and must be re-entered. You can find that beta key at the Make MKV forums. The second step is to start Make MKV and insert your Blu-ray disc that you want to rip into your drive. The third step is to open the disc by clicking on the large Blu-ray drive icon. The software will read and list all of the titles found. For the fourth step, you're going to need to select the title that you want to rip. For a movie, it's pretty safe to pick the title with the largest file size. For TV shows with multiple episodes on each disc, you'll need to select each title. Once again, it's pretty safe to use the largest size files. HD audio tracks will not be selected by default, so click the small arrow next to each title to select specific audio and subtitle tracks. Step 5. You want to select the output folder where you want your title saved. This should be the same folder that you pointed your Plex library to. Click on the icon with the little green arrow pointing at the hard drive. This begins the rip. This will take a little while as these files are very large, so go grab yourself a drink. When the rip is done, you may want to rename the file using the title and year for movies and the title, season, and episode number for television shows. This will make sure that Plex correctly identifies your content and downloads the proper images and other information. That's it. You now have everything that you need to get Plex up and running at little to no cost for most folks. In addition to watching your content at home, you can explore Plex mobile apps and access your content on the road. You can also share your content with friends. Let us know how you like Plex, whether you're using it on the Roku, an HTPC, or another device, and whether or not you'd like to see more content like this. You can find us at the Audioholics forums, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, and you can also hit us up on Facebook and Google+.